Welcome back. Okay, so in the last few lectures, we've introduced this idea of a random sample of a larger population, and we've shown that the sample mean x bar is a normally distributed random variable whose mean is the population mean, and it has its own variance. Um, this is by the central limit theorem. And what this, we hinted in the last lecture that the fact that this sample mean is normally distributed can allow us to make very precise statistical statements about the likelihood of X bar being within some value of our true population mean mu. So this is going to be codified in the notion of a confidence interval, and confidence intervals are ubiquitous in statistics. They're kind of the dual of the hypothesis test that we're going to introduce next. So this is very closely related to hypothesis testing. Um, and this is a super important idea. So I want to introduce it here in the context of um, the normal approximation to the sample mean x bar and how it approximates the population mean mu. But this is a much more general concept. OK, so I'm going to state what it means in words. Then I'm going to draw a picture. Then we're going to show how to use it. This might not seem. 100% intuitive at first, but it's going to get really intuitive really, really quickly. So a confidence interval, a we say a P percent confidence interval, let's say this is a 95% confidence interval for mu. It's a random interval. You can just think of it as an interval for now. It's, it happens to be a, a random variable. It's a random interval centered at our best guess x bar that contains mu with some probability p percent. So I'm going to say that again. We have a p percent confidence interval, a 95 percent confidence interval for mu is some interval. It's x bar plus or minus some value so that mu is 95 percent likely to be in that uh, x bar plus or minus whatever value. So we're trying to find that interval. What is the size? What is the the size of the interval around x bar so that I'm 95% sure that if I, you know, repeated this sampling a bunch of times, 95% of those times mu would be in that random interval. Okay, so um, maybe I'll, I'll just draw a little picture over here. Um, so we know that our sample mean uh, x bar is centered around mu on average. Okay, so, so x bar is a random variable whose expectation is mu. But if I do this sampling, if I sample 30 individuals one time, I'll get a value that's not exactly mu. It'll be, you know, within some expected, it'll be within this distribution for x bar. And if I sample again, I'll get a different value for x bar. And if I sampled again, I'd get a different value for x bar. And that's what I mean by x bar being a distribution. And so what we're looking for, a p percent confidence interval, is some interval around x bar, some interval plus or minus, so that we essentially have p percent probability inside this range. Okay, so there's p percent or p probability is inside this interval. And what that means intuitively, we don't say that there's a 95% chance that mu is in this interval because this is a little bit uh, philosophical, but we think of mu as a true but unknowable quantity. It exists regardless of our sample. Our sample is an imperfect approximation to this true existent mu. So we don't say that there's a chance that mu is inside our interval. We say it a little bit differently. What we say is that if we randomly generated x bar and established the interval around that specific x bar, if we did that a bunch of times, 95% of the time, that interval would contain the population mean mu. Now, those are those basically mean the same thing. That basically means that there's like a 95% chance that mu is within this interval, but we don't say it that way in statistics. Um, and I think it, it's good to be a little bit careful about how you say things. Um, but it does mean essentially there's a p percent or a 95% chance that mu would be in this interval for any given x bar that you sample um, from your random sample. 
Okay. Now, how do we compute that interval? That's the real question. How do we compute? What are the bounds of this? This is like, you know, plus or minus. This is plus some quantity, I don't know, uh, Q and minus some quantity Q. How do I compute this interval so that mu is in that interval P percent of the time? So what we mean, uh, I'm just going to write this, the probability, this is different than, than this P. This is my probability, my big P. My probability that x bar minus mu is within this range, kind of um, minus q to q. We want this probability to be equal to p. Okay, we want this to be equal to p. And we say that that's also 1 minus some constant alpha, okay? So if p is 95% or 0.95, then alpha is 0.05 or 5%, okay? These are both going to be useful. So this is the mathematical statement. We are looking for a q. We want to find a q such that this is true statistically, okay? We know mu. We, we don't know mu, but um, we know the distribution of x bar. We know it's standard deviation, we know its expected value is mu, so we can probably, and we know it's normally distributed, so we can compute the Q that gives us this confidence interval P. Okay, good. Um, so a little fact that we're going to need. Um, given uh, a standard normal, a normal 0 to 1, uh, you can define the cumulative distribution function. So remember that if I have a standard Oof, standard normal, then there is some value if you, how do I want to say this? Um, we know that the cumulative distribution function phi of z is the probability that my random variable is to the left of that value. Okay, we know that phi of z, this is the cumulative distribution function for this standard normal, this phi of z is the probability that I am to the left, that my value is to the left of that, that z. Okay? That, if I want, let's say I want this area to equal alpha, okay? Then cumulative distribution function of z is 1 minus alpha or p, okay? I'm just, I'm setting up a, a fact that's going to be useful up here in a minute. And so you can invert this. Because the standard normal uh, is well-defined and the cumulative distribution function is monotonic and invertible, if I have an alpha, I can actually back look up what is the z that would give me this alpha. So I can say if there is an alpha I want, if I want 0.05 or 0.01, I can look up the z that will give me an alpha of 0.01 or 0.05 or whatever. So we can say that there is some z of alpha that will give me area to the right equal to alpha. Okay, this is um, kind of obvious, but I'm a mathematician. I can create this function z of alpha, and it's the z such that if I plugged it into the cumulative distribution function, I would get a probability of 1 minus alpha to the left and a probability of alpha to the right. Okay, that's the only real property we need to set up this uh, confidence interval. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, maybe I'll do blue and orange. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this PDF and I'm going to divide by the standard deviation or the standard error of x bar to turn this into a standard unit normal distributed variable so that I can then use this formula and this uh, kind of formalism in terms of the cumulative distribution of the standard unit normal. Okay, so this is equal to, let's see if I can do this, this is equal to probability uh, of some value, let's say, I'm not going to do this quite yet, there is some x bar minus mu over sigma divided by root n, less than or equal to some value, and I want this to equal p, which equals 1 minus alpha, okay? And so, let me just draw one more picture here, um, or maybe I'll use this picture here. 
What this means is that if I transform this into standard unit normal coordinates by literally just dividing by the standard deviation of x bar, this guy, then what I'm really looking for is I'm looking for tails that each contain alpha over 2. I want this tail to contain alpha over 2 of the area and this tail to contain alpha over 2. And if I have, if I find the value where each tail contains alpha over 2, then the area in the middle is 1 minus alpha. Okay, good. That's, that's easy. So what I want is I want the cumulative distribution function where the area to the left is alpha over 2. Okay, so this is going to be this z. Uh, maybe I'll do this again in orange. This z of alpha over 2. Um, I guess this is minus z of alpha over 2, and this is plus z of alpha over 2. Now I want you to pause, slow down, convince yourself that what I define this z of alpha, where you know the area to the right of that is alpha over 2, that's what I want here. I want the area to the right to be alpha over 2, and I want the area to the left of this interval to be also alpha over 2, and this is how I do it. And so what this means, this is actually my confidence interval for, X, for mu being in this range, x bar plus or minus this stuff, okay? Um, how do I compute this? Okay, and there's actually numbers. This is pretty useful. So for um, p equals 0.95, this is 95% confident then that would mean alpha equals 0.05 and z over 0.02, sorry, z of 0.025. So this would mean my z value is, um, so this would imply that z of 0.025 is equal to 1.96. You can look this up in the back of a statistics book. Um, this is something that you can pull out of Python, out of the, you know, whatever, scipy.stats um, toolbox. You can go to the cumulative distribution function of a standard unit normal, and you can find the z so that the area to the right of it is 2.5%, and that will be a z of 1.96. If you like, this is 1.96 standard deviations. So this is plus 1.96 standard deviations, and this is minus 1.96 standard deviations. Now, that was all formulated in these normalized coordinates where I divided by sigma over root n, but I really just wanted to know what is the interval around x bar that contains mu. This is what I actually wanted. So I'm going to write that down. So essentially, uh, I can kind of multiply both sides by sigma over root n, and I get um, a 95% confidence interval is x bar plus or minus um, sigma over root n times this z of alpha over 2. This is the useful formula. This is my confidence interval. This is my p percent confidence interval. And you can actually take that code that we were working through, that Jupyter notebook, and what you can do is you can actually, remember how we, we drew these random samples and we did it like m times, or m was 100, we did this procedure like 100 times in simulations? You can actually compute this confidence interval for that x bar, and you can compute how many times did mu actually lie in this confidence interval, and it should be about 95%. It won't be exactly 95, but it should be about 95%. Um, so if you repeat this, you know, a hundred times or a thousand times, mu will be in this interval about 95% of the time. That's what our confidence interval means. Very, very useful. And this z of alpha over 2 is computable. You can look this up from the standard unit normal cumulative distribution function. Very, very, very useful. Um, again, this is uh, 1.96 for p equals 0.95.
And that basically means I take 1.96 standard errors, so it's x bar plus or minus 1.96 standard errors. That is a 95% confident in interval for mu, okay? Last thing, we don't actually have sigma. That's something we don't know. So you can replace this with the population, sorry, the, the sample variance. You can replace this um, quantity. You can replace this with, um, I guess, sigma hat over root n square root of one minus little n over big N. This is going to be a good approximation. Um, did I do that right? I certainly hope so. Um, well, okay, this is an approximation for sigma. So I guess you take this whole thing divided by another root N. But anyway, you can take your sample variance, you can replace this, which is in terms of a variance I don't know, with an expression in terms of a sample variance that I do know. I'm not 100% sure I didn't mess up an N here, so go back to the notes and look and actually see exactly what this correction is. But the, the moral, the upshot is that you can, uh, you can replace this with a value that's computed from your sample data um, and get a pretty good estimate for your confidence interval still. Okay, um, that's confidence intervals for now. We're gonna revisit this a lot when we do hypothesis testing. This is a super important idea um, that we're gonna come up over and over and over with um, later. So, you know, it, let's say I change something. I change uh, voter rules or I have some guerrilla marketing campaign and I think my population has changed. I can test that hypothesis that my sample has a different mean by using these confidence intervals. That's going to be hypothesis testing. That's super important, and that's coming up very soon. Okay, thank you.